I want to talk about the importance of community and culture. Uh, we have lots of wonderful things in this world that uh, provide all kinds of conveniences, but community and culture are things to me that are essentially human. I'm fascinated by the evolution of the human mind. When I look at Michelangelo's sculptures or I look, listen to Beethoven's music, it's hard for me to understand how a human brain, a human being can create those things. And I know that I can't do that, but that I have a responsibility to ensure that those traditions continue. And I worry that on our modern world, the traditions of community and culture are not going to be the major subject of, of other institutions, of governments, of religions, whatever. Uh, and I say all the time that it's our responsible possibility, we the people, can make a difference in preserving the traditions of culture and community. Now, when I tell you what I think community is, it's more than just a place. It has a social dimension as well, but it's a place where people share. It's a place where we talk, where we experience. Tonight, Brandon was a classic example of the richness of culture and community. He brought talent, remarkable talent, for an eight-year-old boy playing the piano in front of a crowd, but in a place a community where we shared. That's the richness, and that's what preserves these traditions for future generations. So I think we, as the we the people, particularly under the threat of government budgets and dysfunction and all the things that give us heartache every day, the, the growing, growing difficulties around the world, that we need to be the stewards and the custodians of those important values, community and culture. Um, and, and we can do it. Um, this museum sitting over here, a wonderful institution, if you've never been there, you need to go there. That was designed, <laughs> built, and operated by we the people. The community came together and funded and operate that. This facility was built by another group. At the south end of this park is the Meisner Park Culture Arts Association. There's a studio theater that's regarded as a jewel in South Florida. It's also built by a nonprofit corporation. And it didn't happen by accident. It happened because this community in 1986 and 87, when this was the Boca Mall site, which couldn't succeed in the competition with my, uh, the Town Center Mall, was a blighting influence on the city's desire to make downtown a place to live, work, and be entertained, a rich 24-hour environment. We're not there yet, but we've made a lot of progress. When they start decided to buy this and see it redevelop, the community called for it to be an art park. Let's tear down the old mall and let's build an art park that will distinguish Boca Raton from any other community in Florida. We will have dedicated a major parcel of land. The economic realities of that were not really practical, but what the city, with the support of the cultural community and the confidence that the cultural community would respond to their initiative, they reserved 40% of the land in this place, Boca Mall redevelopment into Meisner Park, for cultural arts facilities and made them available for a period of 10 years at a dollar a year rent to any organization that was willing to step up and fund the improvements to bring a cultural home to our city. And this museum was one of the first to step up. The Center for the Arts at Meisner Park stepped up to build this amphitheater and the Originally, the Car International Museum of Cartoon Art and then later the Meisner Park Cultural Arts Association did the same thing in, in, uh, for the Cultural Arts Center. My message to you and what I want you to go away with tonight, the most important thing for me, is that we the people have got to be the custodians of this tradition. And everything that you've heard from Brandon to the speakers about neuroscience, uh, they need a place 
for those values to be expressed. And I think this community uh, proves this, the theory that I have. Now, the uh, evolution of mankind is really remarkable when you think about it. The prior speaker talked about emerging from the primordial s uh, stew. Um, and we've been around, uh, our forefathers were, came on the earth about, our predecessors came on the earth about 200, 2 million years ago. And Homo sapiens emerged about 200 million years ago and became really a lot like us. That was genetically and became much more like who we are 100 million years ago. Um, but in time, everything's happening at warp speed these days. And so that's why I have been advocating everywhere I can that we the people need to step up and start caring for the cultural traditions that have given us uh, the richness of the history and to preserve it. And this is a classic example of what it is. Now, it's not easy. Um, public agencies have got to cooperate. Public agencies have got to respect the arts. They need to understand it. And with today's challenges and the politics of the moment that seem to be driving things, it takes leadership and it takes commitment. Uh, it takes commitment and it takes time. That is talent, time, talent, and what I call talents. Because there are two talents, uh, the biblical talents of money and the talent that people bring. But we need to be involved in our community if we want to sustain these traditions. Um, th there are very few opportunities that we have as a society to take control. If you look at politics in our world, I think the we the people and the uh, preamble of the Constitution is slowly going away. I think it's becoming me the special interest. We have a specter of a group of very wealthy Americans who have announced that they're going to spend basically a billion dollars in the 2016 uh, election uh, to ensure the outcome serves their interests, their perspective of how the world ought to be. I have a real hard time understanding how that reflects the principles of democracy on which this nation was fought, uh, created and how we have succeeded. And the only way we can protect ourselves is we don't have billions of dollars, is to preserve these traditions of the place that serve the, era, the notion of the commons. The tragedy of the commons is when we lose our sense of collective benefit. And the we the people is falling from our vocabulary and I encourage all of you to get active. There are organizations everywhere that need help. And it's, it's really a powerful force that we don't use. And I've tried to think about how could I tell you all about how much power we really have. And I, I've come up with an idea. The average person in the United States watches 35 hours of TV a day, a week, excuse me. 35 hours. And if you take that number and just take, there are about 250,000 people who live in the greater Boca Raton area who are regular visitors here to Meisner Park and other places in the downtown. If you take those 35 hours that those 250,000 people spend watching TV every week um, and multiply it, uh, by 48 weeks of the year, you get an astounding number. It's a giant number of days, 70 days that the average person spends watching TV. So what if, in the pursuit of these values that I've tried to discuss with you, um, what if everybody committed to, not everybody, but some people committed out of that group to devote a percentage of their time of TV watching every week. And by the way, I'm not slamming TV. It's just an easy way to illustrate how much power we really have as a, as a public. The, if you take 10 percent, if you one third of those 250,000 people devote 10 percent of their TV watching time, that is 3.5 hours a week. Uh, and calculate how many hours in the year would be devoted 
to community and cultural resources and programs. And you valued that at $10 an hour. $10 an hour. It translates into $138 million a year. That's an enormous sum of money. Think about what we the people could do if we created a community foundation based on that contribution of time. Now, I know it's not easy to find places where you're happy and interested in participating, but we put on a festival here every year. We have a couple of hundred people who volunteer every year, and they do all kinds of things. They take tickets, they are ushers, they park cars over here, and they, importantly, when we have rehearsals on this stage and we have an Ixoc Perlman provide, practicing the violin, we can bring students from schools all over South Florida to watch that rehearsal, to see a wonderful master perform, but we could never do it if we didn't have ushers to keep order and to help sure that they are quiet when the maestro is performing. So that's a part of our whole model of serving the community that we couldn't do without volunteers. And so, but today with social media, I, at first I was concerned that social media would take away uh, from the sense of um, uh, community. We've had a lot of pressure the last 50 years in, on community and culture. Sprawl isolated people from the places of, of common. Suburb, suburbs didn't have um, uh, places like a, a community center like this. Um, we added two hours to our days when we started commuting uh, significant distances, and that takes away that opportunity for the time. Uh, but we have an opportunity to really take that back if we do it as a community at large. Now, I'm, I wasn't, I have no musical talent at all. My mother was a fairly astounding pianist, but I grew up in West Palm Beach, and I have no real talent of any kind in that regard. But I firmly believe that what keeps us going, what we've heard over and over again tonight is with Brandon and with everyone else, the importance of who we are, the human side of our equation. And what I'm trying to leave with you is that we have a responsibility, we the people, to take control of this part of our life. It's the only thing I know collectively that we can get together and make a difference. And I use this park not because it's the only place. There are examples all over. The Dreyfus Center wouldn't exist in Palm Beach if it weren't for the community. The Broward Center in Palm, and Broward wouldn't exist without the community. The Arsh Center wouldn't exist without the community that proposed it, nor are there museums there. It's a common phenomenon. But it needs to be done not just at the grand scale. It needs to be done at the community scale because a large part of our population needs to be exposed. One of the things we're proud of and proud of this facility is we have an opportunity to bring great artists here in this venue uh, so that we can sell tickets for $15 to kids to come hear something they'll ever, it'll walk away just shaking their heads. But you can't do that unless you do it as a community. You can't do it unless you put the we first. Um, so. I implore each of you, in your own way, find a place to get involved in the community, bring your resources. I marvel at all the talk about how big government is strangling us. I, I don't know how to deal with that argument, but I know that if we go out and serve our community, we can make it a better place. And I believe that community and culture will make the difference. Uh, it's not gonna save us. Um, uh, if we, it, it will save our integrity if we protect it. But if we don't get involved as a community at large, if you leave it to the few who made this museum a reality, um, and it's not just contributing your time, it's go see the show in there. Every time you go into that show, you make it easier for them to survive and succeed. When you come to the cultural arts performances here that the city puts on, you sustain the city's interest in continuing to do that. And when you come for the festival, you help make that festival a legacy the, for the future. Um, we're very proud of what we've been able to achieve, but I'm t what I'm really peddling is become a part of it. Be a part of making we the community a reality. Community and culture is really important. Thank you.